Power 92. We are number one in the streets. All right, it's Power 92. We are number one in the streets. Your midday girlfriend, Money May. Huh? The reason I'm hurt is in the <laughs> building. My girl, Sweetie, welcome to the show. Hey, girl. <laughs> Not you had me out at 90 nights I real get, late. I get in trouble for giving you a good time. Girl. So... Just as a visual, Sweetie was walking around yesterday with this tray of shots. <laughs> it was like an array of shots. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was, we were mixing. I was doing tequila all night, and I thought you came with nothing but Hennessy. I was like, it's going to be bad. You know what time I got in? What time you get in? 4 a.m. in the morning. 4.04. 4.04. 4 Are you serious? Because I was saying, like, those shots made me make other moves throughout oh, the night. Okay, girl. So. We love us a 90 night. You know, yeah, I'm living up to this 90 lifestyle, girl. Welcome to 90 nights. But I enjoyed it so much. So are you doing 90 nights everywhere? I want to do 90 nights everywhere. And I just feel like it's such a fun environment. And I feel like it's becoming a mixer. Like, I like that everybody's able to, like, just connect and have a good time. And we had a time last night. We had a good time. <laughs> How late were you up? How late were we at? Um, okay. I lost track of time. Girl. I just passed out. I made sure I had a makeup wipe and a bonnet. So, yeah, that's where I messed up. I was so tired. Mm -hmm. I didn't take no makeup off. Oh, so my pillow got all the red lipstick I had all over it, girl. Okay, it happened. It was real, real, real bad. But 99s need to make it, like, for real a national thing. I seen you I did it, it in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, it's how, my second time. So. Yeah. We did Miami, and then we did Chicago. Where are you at next? L.A. L.A., period, period. Are you doing something different each time, or is it kind of like the same thing? You want it to be a mixer style? Honestly, Chicago, y'all turned me up. Period. In Miami, it was only like 10, 12 people. Yeah, it was like, it was a party in It there. was busting last night. And I was DJing. <laughs> you was DJing. You were going crazy. <laughs> Everybody was like, who DJing? I was like, me. Me, period. Is that... Are you usually the DJ when you and your friends go out? Because that's usually how yeah. I am only because I'm on the radio. But it gets tiring. I love it. Really? Yeah, because I like when people be like, ooh. Do they be expecting you to play all your music? Um, I mean, sometimes people don't know that I'm DJing. Yeah. And I like it. I like it, though, because they be... It's like a mystery. Yeah, mm -hmm. period. Well, yeah, I'm a little tired, girl. I ain't gonna lie. But Girl, I'm probably both. gonna take me a tequila shot after this to kind of like serious? to kind of wake me up. Oh, to Girl, wake me you're up. Strong. To wake me up, girl. So let's talk, Nani. Like. I feel like nani could mean like a couple different things. Somebody was asking me, well, what is a nani? I said, I don't know. I'm finna ask Sweetie, what is a nani? What's you a nani? Know, it means different things in different cultures. It means what? It means beautiful. It means mom. But I feel like Nani is just, you know, that it girl, that it boy energy. Is it? A Nani and a Bonnie. I feel Which like. Which one do you got? Yeah, I seen an interview <laughs> the other day where they were like, I think it means, I was like, I think it do too. Like when I heard it at mm -hmm. first, I was like, do Nani mean that? But then I heard the song and I was like, I feel like it can mean so many different things. Yeah. Like you could be in your Nani era yeah. type shit. What kind of era are you in in your life right now? Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Hmm. I be feeling like I be going through, like, different eras, like, every month, damn near. You know what? I feel like, you know, I saw I saw a tweet. It was like, I'm at a point in my life where if you say one plus one equals five, you got it. I think that, too. <laughs> I think that, too. Because mm -hmm. I want to stay out the way. Yeah. I want to stay. I'm not arguing with nobody. You got it, baby. <laughs> so is that the cancer in you? What? Is that, like, a cancer trait where you just, like... You got it. I ain't got nothing to say. You got it. Mm, I feel like it's a me trait. I don't know if all cancers are like that. When is your birthday? It's coming up, right? July 2nd. Are you doing anything special? You know, I have like half the plans. I haven't even invited everybody who I'm supposed to invite, but um, I'm figuring it out. Do you call it sweetie season or is it cancer season? I feel like it's icy season. Icy season. Mm -hmm. Now, be candid with me. Like, I'm an Aquarius. Like I was saying last night at the table, Sweetie went around and she had everybody say, like, where they're from, what sign they are. It was are. like five Aquarius It was a lot of back us. Back to back to back. Y'all was deep. We're deep. But there was a lot of cancers, too. Mm -hmm. So, I only have, like, mm, my mom, my dad, and my sister are cancers. So I, I got a lot of cancers. But I want you to tell me, yeah. what are the good traits of being a cancer, mm -hmm. but then, like, not the best traits? 
cause of a cancer? Um, I feel like the good traits that I've experienced with other cancers is the hospitality, always trying to feed you. Um, I have a, a cancer friend who's she's my home girl, and when she comes over and I, if I leave to work, I'll come home. She'll cook for me. She'll clean for me. And I'm just like, dang, am I married to you? And she's a cancer, too? Yeah, she's such a, like, joy to be around, too. But That's cool. She's just always, like, helpful and giving and just a super loving person. I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, what about, like, the side that you're like, ooh, I know you're a cancer? Because um, you, you act was, like me. Oh, my gosh. I would <laughs> say I would, <laughs> I would say the sensitivity. The sensitivity. Yes, because you could say, like, me, I feel like I'm a non-traditional cancer because my mom's an Aries and my dad's a Scorpio. Mm. So I wasn't allowed to be emotional. And sometimes I can be too direct or blunt. Um, So sometimes I'll come off a little too strong and then another cancer, like, their eyes would get watery. And I'd be like, oh, no, I didn't mean it like that. But, you know, sometimes I could be a little too direct, but um, I would just say that. I would say the sensitivity. Is emotional different than being sensitive? Oh, that's a good question. You know, because I feel as an Aquarius, people say like I'm super nonchalant, which I am, but I'm real emotional, really? but I'm not like sensitive. Wait, let's break that down. Okay. So emotional. What would you consider emotional? Hmm. Showing emotion, feeling emotion, and then sensitivity, I feel like. Getting your feelings hurt easily. And then showing it, like that's maybe crying. Okay, I feel I don't like know. I feel okay, then that's what it is. I feel I think that's what it is. It's the it's the sensitivity that can be the the other side of, of the cancer. But I'm like a super empath. So like if I do something mm-hmm. and it hurts somebody's feelings, like I feel real bad about it. I'd be feeling bad too. Can you feel other people's feelings too? Girl, I could feel like I could just feel other people's emotions. Like, I could tell what kind of day they're having. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. What kind of day was I having yesterday? Well, you, talk, well, <laughs> you was with me, so I know you was having a good a time. A lit day. Mm-hmm. A lit day, even litter night. Um, let's talk rich tivities. Now, this is four months old, right? This mm-hmm. is your four-month-old baby. How do you feel about the record? And then I want to know, like, what is the richest rich tivity you've ever participated in in life? Mm. The richest. Um, how do I feel about rich tivities? I still like to do a video because I feel like when people hear rich tivities, they automatically assume the shopping sprees, the lavish lifestyle. But because of the visual, that's already like. Did you see that one? It was a visualizer. Yeah, it's like a loop almost. Yeah. It's a loop. Yeah, it's extremely it's extremely high end and bougie. But I wanted a music video to kind of like tell the story of what a rich tivity is. Like I wanted it to take place on a college campus and I wanted to show like students, you know, working, studying, graduating, because all of these things that they do help them do the rich tivities in life. Mm-hmm. So it's like going to work, hustling hard, um, doing what you gotta do to be successful. I feel like that's a rich tivity in itself because it, when it pays off, like that's your reward. I agree, because you don't just wake up overnight and you're this person that's got all this money and all this success. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting you bring that up, because that was the interview I watched the other day where you got a little emotional talking about how you had to grind it out. Mm -hmm. Um, I just started managing an artist and, you know, just in the beginning stages, I'm like, damn, so this is what it's like. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. What was, like, that one thing that, like, you learned during that grind moment that, like, you still apply today to your life? Mm, one thing that I learned. And, like, something that you still apply from that you know, you talked about having the Craigslist rented room and how that's where you wrote Icy Girl. Yeah. I don't think people would know that. I think people would think like you was already put on when Icy Girl was written. Mm-hmm. But when you really painted that picture for me, I was like, that's real. Like, I'm going to be real. My artist just got signed, but she hasn't moved. Mm-hmm. She's still living the same life. Right. Nothing has changed right away. Mm-hmm. So what was that thing that you were like? I learned this during this grind moment, during this grind, during my come up. And now that I'm here, like, I'm still able to apply this to what I got going on today. 
You know, interestingly, my fans have told me that they feel like this is my Icy Girl era 2.0 because of like how much fun I'm having and just like the energy that I have. And I actually had to tap back into like those emotions because I feel like not just me, but when we come into the game, we're all just so, you know, big eyed and excited for what what the music industry holds. And then, you know, over time, some people get jaded. Some people get, you know, backstabbed, betrayed, and it takes like the joy and the light out of them. So I really just wanted to go back to that feeling to where I was just excited to be here and I didn't know what to expect, but I just wanted to do my best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think when you go into it like that, it just ends up so much better too, instead of like, I have to have a hit. How do I create a hit? However, but when you're constantly being surrounded by these circumstances that make you feel like you're not good enough, that make you feel like you're always being compared to someone, that make you feel like you're not worthy of being here, that can take a toll on somebody. But I just think that a reset is important. Um, I think setting your intentions and realizing why you're here in the first place is important because it, it'll realign you into the right direction. Are you big on God? Oh, yes. Yeah. Girl. That's I, my boy. No, yes. What? Girl, I'll be praying. I'll be talking. And you know what? You know what I learned? I read somewhere. It said a prayer doesn't always need to be what you think it is. Meaning just talk to God as if he's your friend. Your, your, yeah. Your homeboy. Just, you know, just have, have the constant communication. And I feel like after I stopped trying to, like, plan my prayers... Instead of like, as compared to just having them effortlessly, it just, I feel like my, my faith became stronger. It's so interesting you say that. Like, I really tapped in with God a lot more recently, like maybe in March. And I was like, dang, how do I even pray? So I would start going on YouTube, like, how do I start? Like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's no way. You just start by thanking him. And then you have a conversation with him all day. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you my life has changed so much since March. And also, like, it it strengthens your intuition, Mm -hmm. your gut feeling. Discernment. And your discernment. Girl. Girl. Yes. Yes. Girl. Mm -hmm. Whew, I love him. Oh, girl, He's I so see. good. I know, that's right. <laughs> He's so good, man. I got so caught up into the radio stuff, and it can happen in music, too, I'm sure, where you just get so caught up that you mm-hmm. don't make time for him. So is it something that you schedule in your day? Primarily, I know that I'm going to, like, do it as, as soon as I wake up. Like, I'm at the point where I'm getting good. As, like, before I touch my phone, I'm like, nah, girl, you got to pray real quick. Yes. So I got to, like, be thankful I'm waking up, be thankful for what I have. And it kind of just, like, puts me in a good mood um, rather than just hopping on the phone, going yeah. straight to work or just straight to the Internet. And I think when you wake up and you're thankful for everything, it helps you be, like, less anxious throughout the day. Because yeah. now you're like, well, I don't got to worry about it if I'm giving it to somebody else. You feel me? So, all right, let me stop getting all, but I read somewhere, I think it was, I don't know who posted it, but it was something about, um, after, after Rich Tivities, was it that you may have said it? And you said something like you hadn't dropped an mm-hmm. album in like three yeah. years. Cause you just felt like people weren't caring about your music, mm-hmm. but with the success of Nani, like, do you still feel that way? You know, interestingly, I feel like that was such a misogynistic take Mm -hmm. on a line that had nothing to do with how they perceived it to be. Really? I had I had an uh, I believe it was was with the Lord, but I was just reflecting on like my past Mm -hmm. and the reason why I haven't dropped my album. And what I really said was there was a point in time where I was creating so much content. I was getting so many brand deals and I was, you know, working outside, doing shows, traveling. I feel like the team at the, at the moment, either, I just feel like we all didn't have the capacity to focus on the album. Mm. I feel like they maybe just didn't know how to care for an album because we were getting money in so many other different, you know, avenues. Um, But I never said like, 
I don't think the world cares about my music. Okay. Yeah, I've I've done, I put too many points on the board for me to ever. You that feel way. me? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, let me ask her. I, I was know, like, girl, I was like, they making me sound like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never said that. I said my girl got <laughs> bangers after bangers after mm-hmm. bangers, and then Nani the way that Nani did what it did. Do you know who Jessie Wu is? I love her, girl. That's my girl. No, I linked up with her, <laughs> and um, I linked up with her and. Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, she's she from to the ATL. Me and Lil Duval. Gee, she's funny as hell. No, I love her. Um, mm-hmm. We've worked a lot together, and when I was watching one of her blogs, she was like, Ooh, nanny, nanny, her nanny. Voice is nanny. so beautiful. Gee, so, she girl, seems so to do good. It. <clears throat> It is. I like that. <laughs> my body. She's fast. I was like, let let me find out. Um, but I love Jesse. I love people like her too. Like you just. I don't know. It's so hard to meet like genuine people. Um, well, she's a cancer. Is she? Mm-hmm. Who do you get along with the most? Like, who does cancer? You're a water sign. Honestly, I get along with everybody. Like, I, I really feel like I'm compatible with everybody. Really? Yeah. Aries, Taurus. My mama Aries, You're, girl. You and your mom is an Aries. Um, Taurus. I like Taurus a lot. Um, That's so wild. Yeah. Like, I don't Leo. Have, Leo's, I love Leo. Leo's love me too. Like, wow. you get a Leo friend, they gonna like ride for you. Maybe because like you're a balance. Because I feel like Leo's, um, I dated one and. Uh, what? Girl. No. He was so. Are you a Leo, Leo? Yeah, this is Leo. <laughs> it's so funny. Are you a Leo too? <laughs> I found that out yesterday. You're right. But <laughs> the Leo man I dated, <laughs> he just was so dry, girl. Dry? And Drive. mad at everything I did. Oh you know, I work in radio, so obviously I have to be everywhere. And yeah. You have a position. You have a, a role to play. He ain't like that, girl. He ain't like that. That doesn't mean he ain't the one. Okay. But I do like my own sign. So when you brought out cancer yeah. and your friend was a cancer, I'm like, gee, I love cancers. I mean, mm-hmm. Aquarius, too. My so. little sister's an Aquarius, and she is, oh, my gosh, the life of the party. Really? Yeah, she's so much fun. So do you have twin sisters? or no, So, I, like... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have cousins and they're twins. Okay. But we have a joke that I'm a triplet. Cause like growing up, I was the only child for a really long time. And I would always wish that I was their triplet. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, I, Cause I wanted them to be my sisters, but they're my cousins. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things like, I don't know if do you ever Google yourself. Yeah. I Googled <laughs> you and I was just curious to see like what questions people were asking. And that was one of them. They were like, does sweetie have twin sisters? They were asking, um, are you related to, like, Gabrielle Union? They were asking a lot of questions. Um, but that was one of them. I I love twins. They, they run in my family. My really? dad's a twin. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whenever I have kids, I want to have twins. Um, like, that's how I want it done. Like, I want it just one and done yeah. out at the same time. Mm-hmm. Fraternal or like boy, girl, boy, girl, it girl. don't matter. Don't Healthy, matter. Healthy. <laughs> you know what? I, I think it's so interesting that you say that because I when I was like a kid, I would ask my dad, like, did you want a boy or a girl? He said, I wanted health you to be healthy. Aww. Yeah, he said, I didn't care what I got, I just wanted you to be healthy. Was that? And I was a big, healthy baby. I love that. Mm-hmm. And you're Blasian, you said? Yeah. Your dad is? He's black. And then your mom is? Filipino. Okay, Chinese. that's cool. Mm-hmm. So what was that like growing up? Um, it was a struggle, girl. I just feel like, yeah, just having identity issues. Mm. I always felt like I wasn't really a black girl, and I always felt like I wasn't really a Filipino girl. And I felt this way, especially at school, because the Filipino girls would be like, you ain't Filipino, look at your hair. And the black girls would be like, you ain't black, look at your skin. So I always just felt like I didn't belong in any group. Do you ever feel like that still? Um... No. Good. I think I've, I think like through those, like kind of like trauma, like through that trauma, I've developed a strong sense of like, well, my identity is just me then. Yeah. Like I love me. And I th- I felt like that helped me grow my confidence a lot. It's just like, you guys might not like me, but I like me. Did it take a while before you started like falling in love with who you were or did it yeah, take? Yeah, girl, I feel like I've. I feel like it's a it's a everlasting journey. Yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting is because of just like and I hate to even bring it up, but just because of how beautiful you are, you would I think people would think the opposite like no, nah, you probably had it 
so good in life no, but and you, but do you know i really appreciate there's like the dark side of of pretty privilege yeah. there's a lot of threads and like for like at least for me i've never experienced pretty privilege so when people get at me like that i'm just like it's just not fair because, I can't imagine it's annoying. No, because like growing up, I would be because I was quiet. I would like like they would assume that I was stuck up. Um, I was automatically just judged, and because I would go like I went to a lot of schools growing up, I was constantly the new girl. So I always had like these uphill battles in my social circles because I was always being like there was always this stigma placed on me, and I just I, I just felt like it wasn't. It wasn't fair as a child. Mm. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't know if you've done any therapy, but like that just reminds me of like one time my therapist had said something like, what would you tell like your younger self? Like if you could write a letter to your younger self, what's something you would say to her? And, you know, I still haven't wrote that letter to this wow. day because I don't know. I feel like there would be so much to go into, so much to mm -hmm. delve into. But I kind of went through the same thing you did. I, I'm Egyptian. Both my parents are from Egypt, mm -hmm. but we grew up in the hood, and it was just I stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So I went through it, too. Yeah. I feel you. Um, but it builds character. No, it definitely builds character. And you just learn to just create boundaries, defend yourself, speak up for yourself. Yeah. Like I had to learn how to like verbally speak up for myself, otherwise they try to like bully me, you know? Um, little kids are mean. Do your siblings <laughs> go through any bullying at all? Because um, my little sister did. Um, the younger two don't really, I don't, I mean, I'm not sure if they do, but um, yeah. You be wanting to go to school and beat everybody ass. <laughs> no, my little sister could fight. Good. <laughs> Period. I, I be here. My dad be calling me. Yo, sister done did. Da, 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 da. So my she, dad is the one that taught me how to fight. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said you're gonna have to learn because just where we grew up. I grew up fighting my um my cousins and my interest. Like so, my uncle is a year apart from me. That's oh, how wow. big our family is. So I grew up with a whole bunch of boys. So I would like wrestle with them, fight with them. So. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't too concerned. You can put them paws on somebody is what you say. No, no, I'm a lover. I'm a lover. I'm not you a You seem like it. You mm -hmm. seem like that. But when you I have to, to be. I try to avoid conflict as much as possible. Yeah, same mm -hmm. here. I just be wanting a peace of mind at the end of the day. Right. And then honestly, you know what's hella funny, though? What's up? In, in these instances, I learned how important confrontation and communication is because I'll approach somebody. And when you approach them, it's just like, oh, I didn't say that. That's not what I meant. And it's just like communication can just solve so many things rather than just going to like the physical route right away. So what um, is your confrontation style? Like when you have to like tell somebody something like, are you like text message? Hey, I got, if we got to talk. Oh, no. Like, how I do you that. do it? I'm, I'm more so like, hey, call me when you get a moment. But I don't like. Oh, that I still hate. sounds no a little scary really my boss be doing that to me i don't me. think so because i feel Girl. like i feel like can we talk later or i gotta t i don't like that i gotta tell you something and then i you don't like it either yeah but like just call me when you have a moment call me when you have a free chance <laughs> <laughs> i think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I sometimes think, I'll just call and be like, hey, this is a good time so when you start are you like so or how do you start it um i think it's it's really it's subjective. It depends on the situation. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's good. I be teeing up. But with God, I have learned, like, mm -hmm. just ease into it, ease into it. So that's where I'm at with it. I don't know what era this is. What era is this? I don't know. I feel like I'm in a real colorful, fun. I feel like I'm a little kid again. I'm not going to lie to you. You're giving me, like, from yesterday to today, it's just giving carefree. It's just giving, like... I'm just going to do me for me. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, that's what I get. Oh, that's, that's what you're right. giving. That's what you're giving. So um, you're tapping into your acting bag. Yeah. Did you love that? Does it align with like what you already do? Definitely. And I had told my agent last year, I was like, no more musician roles. I'm a musician every day. That's not really a challenge. And 
Because you played yourself on BMF no. or? Mm-mm. Okay. So out in the beginning, I would typically get casted as, you know, the musician. Okay. Um, It's happened like two or three times. But I was like, you know what? I want to audition for like real roles. So, girl, I'd be having to like send in a self tape. Okay. For my auditions. So, is that how auditions work now? You just do tapes and send them in? You don't like stand in front of people? I think it's, it, it depends. Um, sometimes, as artists, we're just given roles. Okay. Um, for the musician roles, they would just give them to me. But since I'd like to audition for other things, I now have to send in self tapes because, you know, they want to yeah. see if I can act or not. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Do you have any more acting gigs coming up? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. period mm-hmm. I know you do mm-hmm. I know you do um but was it different being on like someone else's set it was different and you know sometimes you hear horror stories about like acting sets mm-hmm. um but on the contrary like the BMF cast was just so helpful I like, love all that. the actors all the actors were like do you need help with something like um and would just give me pointers Everybody was like super up, uplifting. It felt like a real like family environment. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. I love that. And are you a fan of the show too? Like you be watching it? Yes, like girl. I watch the watching. documentaries. I read. I read the Wikipedia. <laughs> like it's just such a staple in you know our culture and our history yeah. and, what, and what that family accomplished. So Absolutely. I'm happy to be a part of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what's up. Um, what are you binging now? What am I binging right now? Are you like a love is blind type of chick? No, girl, I honestly like, I like watching stuff I already like. Yeah. Or I, like I already watched. Mm-hmm. So now I'm binging the Matrix series. The Matrix series. Okay. Yeah. I do that like once a year. Mm-hmm. Do you do Marvel at all? Um, Marvel, DC. Yeah, the older ones though. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to get into it. Really? Yeah. My dad's a really big comic book fan. That's so what's up. I grew up like watching all that stuff. That's what's up. I like that. Um, what about these food concoctions? We're going to wrap up with this because you have so many. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, man, out of every single one of them, what are like the top two everybody's got to try? I feel like spaghetti with ranch. Spaghetti with ranch. Uh-huh. And then you got to, like, if you get a tuna roll, um, squish up some hot Cheetos and then drizzle it on top. (laughs) It sounds good. (laughs) It sounds good. So we're going to wrap up with that. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Any more, you know, Nani talk? Anything else that you got coming up that you want to share with Chicago? Um. Just thank you. Thank you for popping out last night to 90 Nights. I felt the love. I thought it was only going to be like 10 people, um, but someone on my team <laughs> got it popping. Um, but I like to do this in every city. I just think that it's dope to put dope people in the room and, um, you know, mingling, eating food, catching the vibe. Um, we need more community things, you know, that aren't just like sections in the club or you know, things that are just more interactive. And that's my goal with Nani Nice, to just create that fun community vibe. I think you hit it yesterday, 100%. Because when I went into it, I thought it was going to be like, we're going to be teeing up. We're not even going to be able to connect with you. But you did your thing, girl. I love hosting. You do? I love it. I feel like if I wasn't in music, I'd be like a concierge or I'd be like a... A host of like a, you know how like there is a that one person in the city that plugs people together. Yes, for sure. I feel like I'd be doing something like that. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And I mean, shit, you probably could still do stuff oh, like that. Nice. You know, coming to a city near you. I love that. Make sure you guys go too. Like, don't snooze on it. Go to Ninety Nights. We had such a good time. Shout out to everybody at Gino and Marty's who came yesterday. Mm-hmm. And thank you. Thank yeah, you. And thank you're you. welcome here whenever. When you're in Chicago, stop here at Power 92. We'd love no, to have you. you. Thank you so much yeah. for the love. And mm-hmm. where can people follow you? Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at S-A-W-E-E-T-I-E, Sweetie. There it is, guys. Sweetie, we're going to post this on YouTube. Thank you so, so, thank so, you, so, so much. Power 92. 92.3 FM.